March 7, 1945. The Americans still don't believe it, but they have managed to capture the Remagen Bridge virtually intact. The Rhine Riverbank, which the Germans had hoped to hold out on for months, is now in danger of collapsing completely if they fail to destroy the bridge and prevent the Allies from beginning to cross it at full speed. But how was this possible? How did operations develop in the vicinity of Remagen? And finally, what consequences did this great German mistake have? Well, that is exactly what we are going to see next. To do this, let's go back to September 1944. The Allies had broken through France after breaking through the German defenses in Normandy in August of that same year. Due to the rapid advance of the last month, they thought that the German armies were already defeated, and that at this rate they would reach Berlin before the new year. To break the new front line, they launched the ambitious Market Garden operation in Dutch territory, with which they hoped to penetrate the northern border of Germany, to later head towards the Ruhr Basin. However, and despite the large deployment of troops that were mobilized for this operation, this Montgomery offensive was stopped by the German Marshal Walter model. A few days later and practically simultaneously, the Americans launched another offensive with which they intended to enter Germany through Aachen. This led to a series of very intense combats both in Aachen and in the Hürtgen Forest, in which the Allied advance was so slow that it did not pose any problem. Subsequently, the Germans launched their offensive in the Ardennes on December 16, and by the end of that month, they also launched another major attack in Alsace that was known as Operation Northwind, which we also recently saw in the channel. These attacks were a major setback for the Allies, who ended up stopping the advances they had been making on the German border to date. Thus, they could not resume their advance towards the heart of Germany until the end of February 1945. It was in the last week of February and the first two weeks of March, when the Allies advanced between 50 and 100 kilometers along the entire front line, and managed to reach the banks of the Rhine River. As we said at the beginning, the Germans expected to hold out in this natural defense for months, although due to what happened in Remagen, their entire defensive approach completely collapsed. After the Normandy landings, the Germans sent explosives to all of their bridges on the new Western Front, so that they would be ready to be blown up when needed. No one knew if the invasion would be overwhelmingly successful, or if it would be repulsed, but it was better to be prepared. In any case, and as is evident, the explosives could not be placed on the bridge immediately, as they could explode by mistake. Let us also remember that these bridges played an important role for Germany, which needed to send reinforcements to the Normandy front, so their destruction was then a priority objective for the Allies. Thus, the Remagen Bridge was bombarded by Allied aviation repeatedly, receiving several direct hits. However, after brief repairs it was put into operation again and again. By early March, the American plan was as follows. The first army was to attack the Rhine and between Dusseldorf and Cologne, and capture the Ruhr Basin from the south. On the other hand, Patton's third army had to cross the Rhine in the Koblenz sector. Once this defensive line was overcome, the Allies would break through Germany unstoppably. At this point we have to indicate that the Allies did not expect to capture any bridge intact, since they were sure that the Germans would blow it up long before their arrival. Thus, they began a series of attacks with the aim of destroying them in order to capture the largest number of Germans who had not yet crossed. This is the reason why the explosive charges could not be placed until the bridge had to be destroyed, because in one of these air raids it could explode prematurely. The Germans, for their part, were interested in having the bridge operational for as long as possible, so that the greatest number of troops, as well as the civilian population, could take refuge inside Germany. By the beginning of that month of March, the installation of boxes and cables were already installed on the bridge, with only the explosives to be placed inside them. The order was not to place the explosives until the Allies were about 8 kilometers from the bridge. At that time they would be placed at full speed, and the bridge would be demolished. The engineer captain in charge of demolition of the bridge was called Karl Frenzehan, and he had about 120 troops to carry out his task. Because the explosive charges sent months ago had ended up being used in other missions, 
At the beginning of March Carl had requested 600 kilos of industrial explosive, but that March 7th at 11 in the morning he only received 300 kilos of an explosive of less power than was used in mining. Whether or not it was enough, the Germans had no choice but to plant these explosive charges and pray that the Raymagen bridge could be destroyed with them. Two hours later, around 1 p.m. on March 7th, a small vanguard of the 7th Armored Division, belonging to General Hodge's 1st U.S. Army, arrived in the vicinity of the bridge. The young lieutenant who led this small vanguard force, this being the German-born Lieutenant Timmerman, was completely surprised when he saw that the bridge was still intact, and after informing his superiors, he received orders to attack immediately and capture the bridge. At this precise moment, the Germans were finishing placing the explosives, the task of which they did not complete until 2.30 p.m. under enemy fire. So as soon as they had finished and withdrew to the eastern part of the bridge, the Germans activated the first charge, which opened a large hole at the western entrance to the bridge, thus preventing any American vehicles from crossing it. However, this was not to stop the infantry. Thus, the German Captain Frenzenhan did not stop requesting permission over and over again to activate the rest of the charges and definitively demolish the bridge. This order finally came from his direct superior Scheller, who was the commander of the Raymagen defense, at 3.20 p.m. So at full speed, Capital Karl tried to activate the explosive charges but this time they didn't work. The only way to activate the charge was to activate the secondary circuit, for which someone had to go almost halfway across the bridge, which the Americans were already advancing on. The German Corporal Aston Fazit volunteered for this task. Finally the explosive charge was able to activate, but only the one on the eastern side did, and because the explosive was not suitable either, it was not enough to bring down the bridge. The Americans, for their part, did not know what was happening, and expected that the rest of the cargo would end up exploding at any moment and the bridge would end up sinking, however, that never happened. Despite this risk, Timmerman made his men advance and they began to receive shots from the Germans from the other side of the bridge. As they advanced, they cut the keys and removed any boxes that might contain explosives. In an attempt to stop the American advance, Captain Carl Frentahan tried to recruit all the men he could, who were sheltering in the tunnel near Raymagen, but the few soldiers he had were not enough to stop the Americans. At the same time, Commander Scheller took a bicycle and escaped from there, to go as quickly as possible to some other command post and inform the German high command that the bridge was going to fall into American hands. This was because no radio or telephone was working on the eastern side of the Raymagen Bridge. Finally, Lieutenant Timmerman was able to finish crossing the river around 5 p.m. and the German garrison surrendered. Before analyzing the consequences of the capture of this bridge, let us try to resolve the question of how this huge mistake in blowing up the bridge was possible. This investigation was carried out by the Americans, who interrogated the soldiers they had captured on the bridge. Lieutenant Frenzahan affirmed that the most likely thing is that the main cable had been hit by a high-caliber projectile and had been cut. Some Polish workers claimed that they were the ones who sabotaged the cables, however this is false because the circuit was fine when they tested it before the demolition. In any case, it is likely that someone committed sabotage at the last moment. Finally, it is also possible that some inexperienced engineer made a mistake. The conclusion they drew was that it was not possible to know for sure what had happened, since all the cables had been cut by the Americans themselves while they had advanced across the bridge. Next, let's see what measures the Germans had to take in this situation. The truth is that the German reaction was very slow and somewhat chaotic, due to the confusion of the moment. So they didn't find out until many hours later what had happened in Raymagen. The next day when Walter Model found out, he ordered a counterattack to destroy as much of the bridge as possible. Some 100 engineers were assembled for this mission, which from barges would approach the bridge and destroy it. However, the Allies had set up strong defenses and immediately captured them. A day later, Model assigned General Bayerlein the mission to counterattack at Raymagen and drive off the Americans who had already crossed back to the other side of the Rhine. For this task, he was given command of numerous panzer divisions that were in the area, but were badly depleted and scattered, 
as well as short of fuel and ammunition. Bayer Line could not do anything other than regroup, but this required several days that were not granted. So, he was ordered to attack immediately with what little he had. At the same time, the Raymagen Bridge had also been ordered to be attacked by the Luftwaffe in order to destroy it. So for several days, the Luftwaffe was attacking the bridge over and over again, losing about 110 planes in that mission without the bridge sinking. Goebbels declared that it was a real catastrophe that the Raymagen Bridge had been taken by the Americans, and that they had established a bridgehead on the Rhine. He commented that this was something that deeply tormented the German leader and that caused him a lot of anxiety. Between March 7 and 14, some 11 badly weakened divisions attacked the American bridgehead but were unable to reduce it, and the Americans continued to gradually expand it. From this point on, the Germans used everything to destroy this bridge, among which we can highlight a total of 12 V-2 rockets that were launched against the Raymagen Bridge, frogmen that were sent down the river, and all kinds of artillery and aviation attacks. As a curious fact, the V-2 that fell closest to the bridge did so at about 270 meters away, although it did not manage to damage it. Finally, during the early hours of March 17th, the Raymagen Bridge ended up sinking on its own due to all the damage it had been accumulating, killing 28 engineers who were working on its repair and injuring 68. In any case, this collapse did not have a significant importance due to the following. When the bridge collapsed 10 days after it was captured, more than 25,000 Allied soldiers had crossed the bridge, and three more bridges had already been built in the vicinity of Raymagen. By then, the Raymagen bridgehead was 13 kilometers deep and 40 kilometers wide. In all this strip they were carrying out construction works of new bridges without the Germans being able to offer resistance. Thus this seizure of the bridge created a sudden additional burden on the German defenses and multiplied their confusion. They had been expecting a large build-up along the Rhine before crossing the river, and the advance at Raymagen meant that the beleaguered German forces lost a much-needed opportunity to regroup east of the Rhine. Eisenhower described the capture of the bridge as, one of those rare and fleeting opportunities that occasionally arise in war, and which, if seized, have incalculable effects in determining future success. Later, he commented, We were across the Rhine, on a permanent bridge, the traditional defensive barrier to the heart of Germany was breached. The final defeat of the enemy, which he had long calculated to be achieved in the spring campaign in summer of 1945, suddenly now, in our minds, it was just around the corner. On the other hand, General George Marshall commented, the bridgehead represented a serious threat to the heart of Germany, an invaluable distraction. It became a springboard for the final offensive that was coming. Finally, other generals declared that the capture of the Raymagen Bridge shortened the war on the Western Front between two and six months, and saved the Americans some 35,000 deaths. What is clear is that the German defenses collapsed completely on the entire Western Front at the end of March, and added to the Soviet offensives in March and April, they led to the final collapse of the Third Reich. Finally we have to indicate that five German officers were sentenced to death for this big mistake, including Commander Scheller, who was executed. Well, I hope that this program on this iconic bridge of the Second World War has been interesting for you. If you are interested in other battles prior to these, such as those of Aachen, Hürtgen, Ardennes, or Northwind, I will leave them in the description. Thank you all for being part of this community, and especially the sponsors who make this possible. Subscribe and share this program if you liked it, and we'll see each other here as always, next Thursday and Sunday. See you soon.